We're going to talk about completing the square on pages 30, 31 of the sixth pace of Algebra 2, 1126. And I'm using my Christmas colors here, green and red, because today is actually the day after Christmas, December 26, 2019. Don't know what day it'll be when you're watching this or needing it for doing your paces, but today is um, a day off school for me. So we're having school for you. It's kind of like playing school, you know, it's fun. All right, let's talk about the steps involved. There's a lot of steps in completing the square. And I, uh, I'm going to use the formula, the procedure that the PACE talks about, all right, so that you can follow their examples. I'm choosing two problems from the homework, um, but I'm not going to take you all the way to the end. I'll let you finish them. But I just want to make sure you get over a hump with both of them. So the first thing they tell us to do is to bring the constant term to the far right. All right, so when you change sides, you change signs. So it'll become y plus 9 equals x squared minus 14x. Now, here, just follow me through here, all right, because this is a very important step. This is where we actually get the term completing the square. We're trying to come up with a quantity squared, okay? And the way we do that is we take half of this x term. I call that the middle term half the middle term, and then we're going to take that number and square it. So half of 14 is 7, right? So we're going to square the 7. Well, actually, we should say that it's negative 7, but we're going to square it. So that gives us 49. So we're going to add 49 here. Now watch, we also need to add 49 on the other side, okay? So we add that to this side. Now, when we factor this, this would be the same as, right, imagine two parentheses here, x minus seven, x minus seven. And if you did the FOIL method, you get x squared, negative seven x, negative seven x would be negative 14 x. Negative seven times negative seven is how we get the positive 49. But that is, okay, so this step here is we're kind of doing this in our head. This gives us the x minus 7, the quantity squared. <clears throat> now, we need to finish doing this, and so this is going to give us what? 50x plus 58. Okay? Now, your last step, I'm going to let you finish this, is whatever you get on this side, now you have to subtract that from both sides of the equation. So then your final step is just y equals something squared plus or minus a number, okay? And uh, the pace calls this a to the h minus x, or is it x minus h? x minus h, I wrote that wrong, hang on. The quantity squared, so you see x and then minus a number, quantity squared, plus k. They say, what is that? Why do they use h and k? Because a lot of the other letters we've already used for other things. <clears throat> but we're going to see in the next two pages after this, uh, was that 32, 33, that this h and k are very important numbers, and we can pull them out, and that will tell us the axis of symmetry and the maximum and minimum points, and which way the axis opens. So there's a lot of cool things that we can learn just by looking at that. But we'll do that in the next lesson, but let's get it to this, to this point. All right, let's take this one here. Now, <clears throat> again, the first step, subtract 23, so I have y minus 23. There's something different we have to do here. This has to be uh, just x, okay? So we, if there's a common factor, like in this case we can factor a 4 out, then I need to pull that out front. 4x squared minus 4x, okay? <clears throat> Now, what is half of this middle term? What's half of negative 4? So you should have got negative 2 in your head, and then you're going to square that, and so you get 4, correct? So we're adding 4 over here. <clears throat> but think about it. What did we really add over here? 
even though I have a 4 here, on this side of the equation I added 4 times 4. So I added 16. So on this side of the equation I need to add 16. See that? Alright, so now that we, uh, we have that, I'm going to let you finish that so you get a number here. And then we're going to have the quantity, I believe it's x minus 2. Alright, the quantity squared because the x minus 2, the quantity squared, will expand to become this trinomial here. x squared minus 4x plus 4 is this part. All right? Simplify this, and then your final answer is y equals this, and then you're going to tack that final number on. After you've added these two together, change the sign, take it to the other side, okay? But the hard part is right here, remembering that we have to factor out the common factor, in this case it's 4, and then when you complete the square, half the middle term squared gets added here, and you might be tempted to say, oh, I need to add 4 over here, but we have to remember that the 4 is actually inside the parentheses. So 4 times 4 is 16, and that's what gets added to both sides. All right. The, uh, <clears throat> I would so strongly recommend, now that you've watched this lesson, go back and study the three examples that they have on page 30 and the top of 31. And just see all the steps that they went through. They laid out very clearly. And each one's just a little bit different. One of them has fractions in it, okay? And then you just have a few problems to do for homework. And then we'll meet up with you after you finish and check these pages. Then we'll talk about page 32 and 33.